Hi there. Good day to you. This is day number 78. Welcome to these readings. Numbers 16, Psalm 36, and our first reading in Luke 23. Let's read Numbers 16. In Numbers 15, we found out that there were sacrifices that could be made for unintentional sins, whether done by the whole community or by an individual. But there was no sacrifice to cover an intentional sin, such as working on the Sabbath, as was so clearly illustrated by the man who gathered wood on the Sabbath. Then, at the very end of chapter 15, we heard the instruction about the tassels with blue cord that were to hang on the four corners of the Israelites' garments. Those are the tassels that Tevia in Fiddler on the Roof didn't know the meaning of. Numbers 16 Korah, son of Izhar, from the Levite clan of Kohath, rebelled against the leadership of Moses. He was joined by three members of the tribe of Reuben, Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, son of Peleth, and by 250 other Israelites, well-known leaders chosen by the community. They assembled before Moses and Aaron and said to them, You have gone too far. All the members of the community belong to the Lord, and the Lord is with all of us. Why then, Moses, do you set yourself above the Lord's community? When Moses heard this, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. Then he said to Korah and his followers, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show us who belongs to him. He will let the one who belongs to him, that is, the one he has chosen, approach him at the altar. Tomorrow morning you and your followers take fire pans, put live coals and incense on them, and take them to the altar. Then we will see which of us the Lord has chosen. You Levites are the ones who have gone too far. Moses continued to speak to Korah, Listen, you Levites! Do you consider it a small matter that the God of Israel has set you apart from the rest of the community so that you can approach him, perform your service in the Lord's tent, and minister to the community and serve them? He has let you and all the other Levites have this honor, and now you're trying to get the priesthood too. When you complain against Aaron, it is really against the Lord that you and your followers are rebelling. Then Moses sent for Dathan and Abiram, but they said, We will not come. Isn't it enough that you have brought us out of the fertile land of Egypt to kill us here in the wilderness? Do you also have to lord it over us? You certainly have not brought us into a fertile land or given us fields and vineyards as our possession, and now you're trying to deceive us. We will not come. Moses became angry and said to the Lord, Do not accept any offerings these men bring. I have not wronged any of them. I have not even taken one of their donkeys. Moses said to Korah, Tomorrow you and your two hundred and fifty followers must come to the tent of the Lord's presence. Aaron will also be there. Each of you will take his fire pan, put incense on it, and then present it at the altar. So they each took their fire pans, put live coals and incense on them, and stood at the entrance of the tent with Moses and Aaron. Then Korah gathered the whole community, and they stood facing Moses and Aaron at the entrance of the tent. Suddenly the dazzling light of the Lord's presence appeared to the whole community, and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Move back from these people, and I will destroy them immediately. But Moses and Aaron bowed down with their faces to the ground and said, O oh God, you are the source of life. When one of us sins, do you become angry with the whole community? The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people to move away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Then Moses, accompanied by the leaders of Israel, went to Dathan and Abiram. 
He said to the people, Get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them. Otherwise, you will be wiped out with them for all their sins. So they moved away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Dathan and Abiram had come out and were standing at the entrance of their tents with their wives and children. Moses said to the people, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things, and that it is not by my own choice that I have done them. If these men die a natural death without some punishment from God, then the Lord did not send me. But if the Lord does something unheard of, and the earth opens up and swallows them with all their own, so that they go down alive to the world of the dead, you will know that these men have rejected the Lord. As soon as he had finished speaking, the ground under Dathan and Abiram split open and swallowed them and their families, together with all of Korah's followers and their possessions. So they went down alive to the world of the dead with their possessions. The earth closed over them, and they vanished. All the people of Israel who were there fled when they heard their cry. They shouted, Run! The earth might swallow us too! Then the Lord sent a fire that blazed out and burned up the 250 men who had presented the incense. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, to remove the bronze firepans from the remains of those who have been burned and scatter the coals from the firepans somewhere else, because the firepans are holy. They became holy when they were presented at the Lord's altar. So take the firepans of those who were put to death for their sin, beat them into thin plates, and make a covering for the altar. It will be a warning to the people of Israel. So Eleazar the priest took the firepans and had them beaten into thin plates to make a covering for the altar. This was a warning to the Israelites that no one who was not a descendant of Aaron should come to the altar to burn incense for the Lord. Otherwise he would be destroyed like Korah and his men. All this was done as the Lord had commanded Eleazar through Moses. The next day the whole community complained against Moses and Aaron and said, You have killed some of the Lord's people. After they had gathered to protest to Moses and Aaron, they turned toward the tent and saw that the cloud was covering it and that the dazzling light of the Lord's presence had appeared. Moses and Aaron went and stood in front of the tent, and the Lord said to Moses, Move back from these people, and I will destroy them on the spot. The two of them bowed down with their faces to the ground, and Moses said to Aaron, Take your firepan, put live coals from the altar in it, and put some incense on the coals. Then hurry with it to the people and perform the ritual of purification for them. Hurry, the Lord's anger has already broken out and an epidemic has already begun. Aaron obeyed and took his firepan and ran into the middle of the assembled people. When he saw that the plague had already begun, he put the incense on the coals and performed the ritual of purification for the people. This stopped the plague, and he was left standing between the living and the dead. The number of people who died was 14,700, not counting those who died in Korah's rebellion. When the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tent. We turn now to Psalm 36. And what a contrast! This is a song praising God's unfailing love. Even so, notice how parts of this poem are so appropriate to what we just read about Dathan, Abiram, and Korah. The Hebrew title is, By David, the Lord's Servant. 
Psalm 36 Sin speaks to the wicked deep in their hearts. They reject you, O God, and do not have reverence for you. Because they think so highly of themselves, they think that you, O Lord, will not discover their sin and condemn it. Their speech is wicked and full of lies. They no longer do what is wise and good. They make evil plans as they lie in bed. Nothing they do is good, and they never reject anything evil. Lord, your constant love reaches the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the skies. Your righteousness is towering like the mountains. Your justice is like the depths of the sea. People and animals are in your care. How precious, O my God, is your constant love. We find protection under the shadow of your wings. We feast on the abundant food you provide. You let us drink from the river of your goodness. You are the source of all life, and because of your light, we see light. O Lord, continue to love those who love you, and do good to those who are righteous. Do not let proud people attack me, or the wicked make me run away. See where the evil people have fallen, where they lie unable to rise. We turn for the first time to Luke 23. Chapter 22 ended with Peter's denial of being a follower of Jesus, and we heard of the council's decision against Jesus. Luke 23 The whole group rose up and took Jesus before Pilato, where they began to accuse him. We caught this man misleading our people, telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor, and claiming that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Pilato asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, That is right, as you say. Then Pilato said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no reason to condemn this man. But they insisted even more strongly, With his teaching he is starting a riot among the people all through Judea. He began in Galilee, and now he has come here. When Pilato heard this, he asked, Is this man a Galilean? When he learned that Jesus was from the region ruled by Herod, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very pleased when he saw Jesus, because he had heard about him and had been wanting to see him for a long time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some miracle, so Herod asked Jesus many questions, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law stepped forward and made strong accusations against Jesus. Herod and his soldiers made fun of Jesus and treated him with contempt. Then they put a fine robe on him and sent him back to Pilato. On that day, Herod and Pilato became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilato called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and said that he was misleading the people. Now I have examined him here in your presence, and I have not found him guilty of any of the crimes you accuse him of. Nor did Herod find him guilty, for he sent him back to us. There is nothing this man has done to deserve death so I will have him whipped and let him go. The whole crowd cried out, Kill him! Set Barabbas free for us! Barabbas had been put in prison for a riot that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilato wanted to set Jesus free, so he appealed to the crowd again, 
But they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilato said to them a third time, But what crime has he committed? I cannot find anything he has done to deserve death. I will have him whipped and set him free. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices that Jesus should be crucified, and finally their shouting succeeded. So Pilato passed the sentence on Jesus that they were asking for. He set free the man they wanted, the one who had been put in prison for riot and murder, and he handed Jesus over for them to do as they wished. The soldiers led Jesus away, and as they were going, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country. They seized him, put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed him. Among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but for yourselves and your children. For the days are coming when people will say, How lucky are the women who never had children, who never bore babies, who never nursed them. That will be the time when people will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, hide us. For if such things as these are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there, and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. They divided his clothes among themselves by throwing dice. Let's pray together. Our awesome and holy God, we call you Father because of Christ Jesus and what he's done. We are in awe of you again. O Lord God, truly sin speaks to wicked people deep in their hearts, and they reject you and do not have reverence for you. They think so highly of themselves. O Lord, pride is our problem. We are wicked in our hearts. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for rejecting your word. Forgive us for our rebellion. May we not be like Dathan, Abiram, and Korah. But Lord, in addition to justice, that is like the depths of the sea, and righteousness that is towering like the mountains, Your faithfulness extends to the skies, and your constant love reaches to the heavens. Lord, thank you for the love and the mercy which has provided a way by which we can come to know you. How precious, O God, is your constant love. Oh, what a joy to find protection under the shadow of your wings. Let us draw close and closer still that we may know that protection. And, Father, we see that the wood that was green when they crucified Jesus has become dry now. Our world is evil, but you are on your throne. You reign, and you have a plan for us and this world. We rejoice in knowing you, and now may we, your servants, do your will today.